Okay, welcome to uh, lab 3. So in uh, lab 3, we're going to start learning the uh, sequential circuits design. Uh, we will use some uh, flip-flops and some latch in this uh, lab 3. So uh, let's start with the uh, first part is the uh, JK flip-flops. So basically, uh, uh, you will learn this JK flip-flops in your uh, lectures. And this JK flip-flop is basically a, 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 a device which is able to uh, remember some data, to store some data. Uh, and uh, they, they, they have the present state and the uh, next state available for this uh, JK flip-flop outputs. So for the flip-flops, they will have uh, two input. One is called uh, J, another one is called K. Then they will have they need the clock signals for them to uh, start operating. Okay, this is the clock signal pin. You need to supply them a clock signal, which is a clock pulse, on and off pulse. Okay. Then they will only respond uh, at the rising edge or at the falling edge for uh, to, to give you the output changes at this moment. Either it's rising edge or falling edge, depends on the design of the uh, circuit. And if it's a positive edge, then they will have one arrow here. If it's a negative edge, they will have the arrow here, then the, another bubble here, which is represent for the negative edge. And the output is, uh, they will have two outputs, which is complement to each other. They, the first output is called Q, the second one is called Q bar. Then they are always opposite to uh, each other. So if you give a J and K input, and this is the circuitry inside your JK flops. Basically, they are built from a 4 NAND gate. Then the clock is supplied to here. So whenever you have a clock signals, rising edge or falling edge, they will respond to your uh, uh, input values. So uh, if you have a both input equal to 0, there will be no change to your uh, output. The output will remain the same. So if you have a 0 and 1 input, then your output will be uh, 0, 1. So your Q will be 0, your Q bar will be 1. Then if it's a 1, 0, your J is 1, your K is 1, then your Q will be 1, your Q bar will be 0. If both is 1, 1, they will uh, toggle, flip itself. So which means if uh, at, at, at current state, your Q is equal to 1, then if you supply a J and K equals to 1, okay, J and K equals to 1, then if you give a clock signal, in the next state, your Q will become 0. If your current state Q is equal to 0, if you give J and K equals to 1, the next state, your Q will become 1. So if it's 1, 1, they will always toggle. The, the, the state will go, always keep changing. Okay, this is this is the, uh, uh, the, the basic concepts of these uh, JK flops and uh, how it should work. And this is the uh, true tables of these uh, JK flops. So this is some of the timing diagrams of this uh, JK flip-flops. So we look at it. Uh, so if we look at it, uh, we only look at the positive edge of the clock. So this is a positive edge of the clock. Okay. Then at this point, we'll look what are the J and K. So the J is a zero here. This is main for zero, and this is a one. This is zero, and this is one, right? So your J is zero. Your K is one. So it's a zero one. So your Q should go to zero. So that's why it dropped to zero. Then at the next rising edge, we look at the K and J and K again. It's both one and one. So that's why if a toggle means in previous step is zero, then it will change to one. Okay. Then in the next rising edge, your K is zero, your J is one. So uh, it, it it will go to one. So it remain at one, right? Then in, in here, both are zero, so means no change. So say it's a one, so means no change, nothing going to be changed, so it will remain a one also. Then at this rising edge, both is also zero, so means no change again, right? Then at this rising edge, both are equals to one again, then they toggle again. And this rising edge, all are equals to one, so that's why they will keep on toggle whenever there's a rising edge. Right, all the rising edge here, they will toggle itself. So this is uh, how the uh, J K flip flops uh, functions. Then the next one we're going to learn is the uh, D flip flops. So 
So uh, the D flip flops, it is same as uh, uh, your 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 JK. Uh, they have a uh, two output Q and Q bar, but in the input there's only have one input which is uh, the D input, and uh, this is the clock signals, and this is the circuitry of the uh, D flip flops. Uh, so D flip flops is a, a, a simple uh, flip flops. The output is always a uh, flowing your input whenever you have a clock signals. Okay, so let's say you have a clock signal here. You have a clock signal, let's say it's a rising edge. Then if your D is 0, your Q will equal to 0. Then if your D is 1, your Q is equal to 1. They will always follow your D, the, the input values. So you give a 1 here, then you give a clock signal, clock pulse, then your Q will become 1. If it's zero, then your Q becomes zero. It depends. It, it will follow your uh, input values of a D. Then, if you didn't supply any clock signals, then there will remain no change. Nothing going to be changed. So they will remember the uh, existing state. What are the values? Then they will store inside the D flip flops. And this is the uh, timing diagram of the flip flops. Uh, okay, this is timing diagram of flip flops. Uh, this, I think this part is uh, having some error here so because uh, if we look at it it should be a rising edge right so we look at the rising edge only okay we look at the rising edge so it, let's say this is your D signal huh? so this rising edge is correct it should be at zero they follow the D then at this moment they shouldn't have any response because there is no rising edge yet so this one should be at zero until this point the rising edge then they, uh, the d is one so only they will go up to one so the q should be at this point so you go up here then at this moment is zero so it dropped to zero at this moment is zero so it remain at a zero then at this moment it is a 1 so it go up to 1 at this one is also 1 so remain at 1 then at this one is 0 so it drop to 0 so you just look at the rising edge uh, rising edge means that uh, the, the, the clock signal is from a uh, 0 then it go up to 1 right the following edge means that the clock is at 1 then it go down to 0 okay. it can be called rising edge uh, positive edge or falling edge negative edge Okay, this is a falling edge or negative edge. This is a positive edge or a rising edge. Then this one is a 1, so that's why I go up to 1. And this one is a 1, so I remain at 1. Then the next last one is a 0, so it, uh, this one shouldn't change also. This one should remain. And due this point, it only drop to 0. Okay, this is also wrong. The beginning and the end part is, is wrong here. Okay, so this is a uh, house the d flip flops should functions apart from the flip flops there is also something called ledges so for ledges they are not uh, operating based on the uh, clock signals they don't need the uh, rising edge and the falling edge to respond what they need is just an enable signal you just need to supply them a enable signal which is equal to one then they will operate for you so this is same as a D flip flops but the difference is they don't need the rising edge or falling edge they just need a signal one at this enable pin you just supply a high signal a logic one to this enable signal then they will operate just like your D flip flops your Q will always follow your D okay your D is 0 your Q is 0 your D is 1 your Q is 1 okay then if you dis disable you, you supply a 0 here there will be no change to your uh, to your Q Whatever you, you, you give to your D, they will remain the same values at Q here. So uh, this is the two types of uh, sequential circuitry you have, the latches and the flip-flops. Uh, the same, uh, the, the, the similar uh, part of the flip-flop and latch is that they are able to remember the values of, the, uh, of, your, of your inputs. So let's say uh, you, you, you store a values Q equals to 1 here. Then if you didn't supply anything to the enable or didn't give a clock signal to the flip flops, uh, your Q was always storing the same values. They won't lose this value. So this is the uh, uh, properties of your latch and then uh, the flip flops. They are able to uh, remember the values 
uh, inside the, uh, the 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 IC. Okay, then by using those uh, latch and uh, flip flops, you are able to build the uh, flip flops counter, which help you to count the values. So this is one of the way they build the uh, four bit counters. Okay, by using these connections, okay, uh, you are able to count from a zero zero up to a one 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 one. So if you look at it, uh, if you supply the first clock pulse, the initially both is all is zero. If you get the first clock pulse, right? Your your uh, Q0 will go up to 1 okay your Q0 will go up to 1 then your second clock pulse your Q0 will drop to 0 then your Q1 will go up to 1 if you look at it uh, the clock is only connected to the first flip flops right so the first flip flops are always uh, toggles at the rising edge so they will keep on toggle at the rising edge then the second flip flops, the Q1 is getting the clock signal from your Q bar. So it will basically respond at this falling edge of your Q0. So that's why it will toggle at this uh, negative edge of your Q, Q0. Then for your uh, Q2, if you look at it, they are connected to your Q bar of your Q1. So that's why they will always respond at this negative edge of your Q, Q1. So that's why you can see they toggle at this moment. Then finally, your Q3 is connected to the Q2, Q bar of your Q2, right? So that's why it's a negative edge here, negative edge here only toggle. And by do by using these connections, you're able to creating the uh, uh, sequential counting. So start from 0, 0, 0, 0, then the second clock pulse, it will become 0, 0, 1, right? Then this is 0 again, this is 1, this is 0, 0, then this is 1, this is 1, this is 0, 0. Then this is zero zero one zero one zero one zero. So if you look at it, this is a zero one two three four and five in decimal. So up to here you will get a one 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 at the end. Then it's equals to fifteen. So they are counting from zero to fifteen and they'll restart again from zero again here. So it will keep on repeating the counting zero to fifteen, zero to fifteen if using the flip flops to connect this kind of circuits. So this is how they build the sequential circuits by using the uh, D flip flops. So apart from uh, using the uh, D flip flops, you are also able to build the uh, synchronous up counter by using the JK flip flops and also uh, the AND get and logic get. Okay. So if you want to build four bits of uh, up counter, you need a four JK flip flops and a two uh, uh, logic get uh, and logic gets. Okay. So this figure shows you how to build the 4-bit synchronous up counter. The Q0 is the MS, uh, LSB, the least significant, and Q3 is the MSB of the uh, synchronous up counters. And in this lab, we're going to uh, use 3 IC, which is the D flip-flops, the JK flip-flop, and the D latch. So we are to try these 3 ICs in the uh, TickerCAD simulations. So by re referring to these uh, pictures, uh, <coughs> ju just to show you, uh, the, 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 the U, U symbol here is, is basically telling you where is the top of the uh, uh, IC. So the left hand side of this one is number 1, right? The, the U shape here, then the left hand side is number 1. The U shape here, the left hand side is number 1. That's the start pin of, starting point of your uh, <coughs> IC pin number. Okay. Then if you look at it, uh, the, the same thing, they, 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 all the IC need the VCC and the ground pin to power them. So VCC and ground pin. Then uh, this one also have the VCC and ground pin. <coughs> so everything have the VCC and ground pin. Then uh, the, in this IC, they also have the uh, uh, asynchronous clear and preset pin. So if you look at it, this is the asynchronous clear and this is the asynchronous preset. So if you don't want this thing to be uh, works, we need to supply a logic 1 to this pin. Okay, so that uh, they won't do the preset and clear. Then we have the clock pin here. So this is the pin to supply the clock. And this is the input of your D flip flops. And then your output is in these two, Q and Q bar. 
So there's two D flip flops in here, uh, one D and two D. So one Q one Q bar is for one D, and two Q two Q bar is for two D. Then they also have a clear and preset for lot this both logic. So this is the clear for logic D logic two. <coughs> Same go to your JK. JK also have a uh, two JK flip flops. You can see there's a one one K one J here. Then the Q for the first logic. Then this is a clock pulse for your <coughs> for your for your uh, JK flip flops. Then this is the uh, this should be the reset uh, for your JK flip flops. So you need to supply a, a one to this uh, reset so that it won't reset. So the the R is just like the clear signal in in this uh, functions table. If your clear is a high, then it only will be works. If your clear is low, I don't care what is the input and what is the clock signals. My my output are always uh, in, in in low. The Q will always reset. Okay, so this is uh, how the JK flip flops functions. Then the last one is the D latch. So D latch is just uh, 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 it's like D flip flops, but it's not dependent on the uh, uh, clock pulse. They will sure away change the outputs whenever you change your D inputs and. <coughs> And they also re uh, will operate when only when your enable pin is high. So when your C, the enable pin is high, then only your Q will follow. If your uh, C is low, I don't care what is your input. I will remain the values inside uh, at the output. So this is a function of a D-latch. It's the same as your D flip flops. The only difference is they don't depend on the clock. They depend on an enable pin. You need to give a high to this enable pin, which is logic one. Then only this uh, D-latch will function. And in D-Latch, there's a 4, uh, four D-Latch, but in D-Flop, only have 2 flip-flops only. Okay, so I think this is all the uh, details. And you can using the uh, Tinkercad simulations to uh, try this 3 IC. Okay, then there's uh, assignment submissions for this, uh, this lab also. You need to construct a 2-bit flip-flops counter using the JK flip flops. I think the JK flip flop in the previous uh, pictures also show you how to build the uh, two bits asynchronous up counter. This is the uh, figure, but this is four bits. What they need is two bits only. So you need to think how you reduce the JK flip flop or what to build two bits. Then submit the diagram by using the Tinkercad, the one in the Tinkercad. Then you need a screenshot to show uh, the, the two bits counter is a function. They are starting to count from zero, zero up to uh, one, one. Okay, so you need to LED to show this uh, uh, transition. So at the beginning, both LED is off, then uh, one LED is light on, when it's zero one, then one zero is another LED is light on, and when one one, both LED also light on. So this is how you sh uh, show the functions of this two bits counter. And it must follow the sequence zero 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 one one zero and one one. Okay, so I think this is all you need to do for lab three.